Everyone knows about Banjo-Kazooie. Everyone has talked about this game, and it deserves the recognition it gets. It's incredible. One of the main things Banjo-Kazooie is known for is the personality the game radiates. Like you just walk up to some dude and they start speaking like <laughs> When you play this game, you can just tell the people who made it really cared and were just having fun with it. Every single location and every single character just has so much personality. One of my personal favorite characters in this game is this fucking green thing. His name is Klungo. He's the antagonist Gruntilda's main henchman. Klungo is a character that I feel is impossible to hate, no matter who you are. He's such a loyal and sweet character, and I've learned to really love him. I feel he stands out as someone special and very memorable if you've played the Banjo games. But, let's talk more in depth about the Man of the Hour himself. This is everything about Klungo. So, just a bit ago, I was calling Klungo a green thing. And I didn't say that for no reason, there is actually no definitive proof on what he actually is. His species is completely unknown, but he looks to be designed as like an ogre or maybe even a troll. Just looking at my man Klungo, you may question his knowledge, maybe being the big and strong dumb type, but he's a fucking genius. He brews potions and engineers futuristic machines. Klungo is a man of science, and you have to respect him for his craft. I'll get more into detail on what he was able to achieve through his career of science later. Even though he is really smart, his grammar isn't anywhere near perfect. You may have noticed that he speaks by holding his S's. Kind of similar to another character in Banjo, known as Slumber. The reason why Slumber holds his S's is obviously because he's a snake. And Slumber probably doesn't relate to Klungo in any way besides that one instance. And you may be saying, all of that is cool, sure. Seems like a pretty cool guy. But not enough to call him one of my favorite characters. Sure, he has charm, but everyone in Banjo does. So what really makes Klungo special? Well, to me, his role. Let's go to the actual Banjo games for some examples. In the first game, Banjo-Kazooie, the developers knew if Klungo had a super major role, he would be everyone's favorite character. So he starts off with a small, but humble beginning in the series. The main screen time Klungo gets is only really on the Game Over screen. The Game Over screen is where we see Klungo's first incredible machine, a machine that's able to transfer beauty between two characters. Gruntilda wanted to use this machine to steal Banjo's sister's beauty, which was her ultimate goal in the game. Besides that, he's just kind of there, being Klungo. But there isn't just one Banjo game, of course. Klungo's role is heavily increased in the following game, Banjo-Tooie. The first character you ever see in Tooie is actually Klungo. Tooie is the game that really made me love Klungo. As goofy as a series Banjo is, Klungo actually has some character development in this game, even if it isn't too much. It's been two years since the first game, and at the end of Banjo-Kazooie, Gruntilda fell down a hole and got trapped by a rock. Since this rock is so large, it's impossible for her to get it off herself. So she asks Klungo to help her push it off her so she can escape. And Klungo tries his best for two straight years. Klungo really loves Grunty so much that he was pushing a rock for, for two years straight. That is the realest friend anyone can ask for. He really wanted Grunty out of the hole. Gruntilda ends up telling Klungo to just call her sister to come and save her, which he does and her sisters allow her to get out of the hole since Klungo couldn't do it himself. But this is where Klungo's story really picks up. Grunty and her sisters like go off, do their shit, whatever, we don't care about them. But to stop and distract Banjo, she sends Klungo to fight him. So the very first fight, like literally like two minutes into the game, is Klungo. So they fight and story shit, it's cool, whatever. But what I think is most interesting is how this fight plays out in speedruns of Tui. So in Banjo-Tooie, you fight Klungo a total of three times throughout the whole game and Klungo has a new potion for every single fight. But you may have not known that the potion Klungo will use in each fight is completely random. There are three different types of potions, but the order in which he will use them throughout the game is completely random. The three potions Klungo can drink are one that makes him huge, one that makes him multiply into a bunch of Klungos, and one that makes him invisible. Since an animation needs to play out when Klungo drinks these potions, the best for a speedrun the first time you fight him is the invisibility potion since it's the shortest animation of the three potions you can get. Which makes Klungo extremely crucial if you want a theoretical perfect run of the game. There isn't that much else to this fight though. When you hit him a magic shield goes around him and he starts chucking these yellow damage potions at you. But that's really it. So when you kick Klungo's ass in this pretty piss easy first boss fight, he runs off and says, this won't be the last you see of Klungo. And he's damn right. He feels saddened he couldn't beat Banjo for Grunty though. So while he's running off, he actually asks for Grunty to beat him with a broomstick, which is 
a pretty sad concept. Klungo just wanted to fulfill his mission, but he felt ashamed, so he thought he deserved beatings. And you'd think this is just a silly little line, or not going to be taken seriously because of the nature of Banjo. But the next time you see him, he is genuinely like, beat the fuck up. And this wasn't from Banjo. Grunty actually like, beat him for losing. It's incredibly fucked up. Klungo tells Banjo that Grunty said if he loses again, he's going to get beat again. So Klungo wants to make sure Banjo doesn't win, because he doesn't want to get beat. But obviously Banjo does win. But Banjo, being the good guy he is, actually sympathizes with Klungo a little. And tells him it can't be good for his health to keep getting beat by Grunty like this and staying with her. So he suggests retiring from being Grunty's henchman. But Klungo declines, saying Grunty needs him. So he goes off back to Grunty. And you meet him one more time in Banjo-Tooie, in the final level. This battle is a turning point, and shows what I meant earlier about Klungo's character development. So Banjo and Kazooie are in the final world, and they just walk into some empty room. And Klungo drops from the fucking ceiling like the badass he is. This time, he's even more beat up, but he's determined to beat the bear and the bird. One thing that's interesting though, even before the fight starts, is that the title the game gives Klungo shows how he's changed perspective over the course of the game. Let me show you. So the first time you fight him at the start of the game, his title was Minion with a Mission, since he's Grunty's henchman fulfilling orders to fight Banjo. The next time you fight him though, his title changes to Revenge Seeking Minion, which is pretty self-explanatory. But in the third and final fight, his title is changed to Career Questioning Minion, which literally means poor Klungo got beat so much that he's thinking of quitting working for Grunty altogether, which is not an easy choice. I mean. He was pushing a rock offer for two years, which means their relationship isn't purely business. He clearly cares for Gruntilda, but she took advantage of him completely, so he's contemplating quitting his role. But at the end of the day, he's just thinking about quitting, not doing it. So he decides to fight Banjo for the third time, and apparently if he loses this time, he's going to be fed to Monster. So he definitely doesn't want to lose. You fight him and win, obviously, so what happens next? Does Klungo actually get fed to some beast? Well, no. Klungo goes in a little heartfelt speech here. Klungo says that he's been noticing after the fights and beatings, he's been getting less and less handsome, and gets a little sad. Saying how his wife misses Klungo won't want him anymore because of him getting less handsome. So he makes up his mind and says that he's had enough. As Klungo runs off, he says that future prospects aren't looking good with Gruntilda. There's no chance of promotion, no days off, and no pay. Klungo then decides to leave for good, and find an easy desk job to make stupid video games. That's the last time we see him in Banjo-Tooie. And you'll see what he meant by stupid desk job later in the series. But these Klungo battles in Tooie are obviously a huge part of Klungo's screen time in the game. There is something you may have not even known about these fights just by playing the game though. If you lose one of these fights and come back to rematch it, the dialogue actually recognizes you lost and makes it into a conversation. Pretty interesting shit, here they are on screen. Enough time spent on Tui though, way too fucking long. Let's see more of Klungo throughout the series. You don't hear too many people bringing up the next game, Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge on the Game Boy Advance. But this shit is important to the Banjo lore, not only for Klungo, but this game is completely canon. It's kinda like Borderlands the pre-sequel, where it's a prequel to the sequel, and I know that might have made no sense, so here's the timeline, you get it now. So in this game, Klungo realizes after two months of pushing a rock that it isn't going anywhere. So he decides to make the Mecha Grunty suit. It's a suit that allows Grunty's soul to enter it. So now she can use it as a body or a vessel and fight Banjo again without having to push the rock. The suit itself can also time travel, which is like the plot of the game and shit, but like it doesn't relate much to Klungo. But you fight Klungo as a boss four times and that made me excited because I thought that naturally meant he developed a new potion that wasn't in Tui. But uh, no. He just uses the invisibility potion a bunch of times and throws the yellow damage potions faster. So I was a bit disappointed, but it's alright, I mean. On the topic of this game though, it was originally going to have some more Klungo action, but got scrapped. The original idea for Grunty's Revenge was supposed to be a kind of what-if alternate universe, where instead of Grunty calling her sisters to save her in Tui, Klungo was able to do it himself. Which honestly isn't even too different from the game that was released since Klungo saved her from the rock in the actual game anyway. But it was supposed to be a slightly different Tui, that was the idea. 
There was also this art which showed that instead of Grunty's spirit being directly transferred to the Mecha Grunty suit, Klungo had to like suck it out of the ground with this machine, but obviously this was scrapped. Next game to talk about is, you guessed it, Banjo Pilot. Not much to talk about here to be honest. He has this new design, and it's cool, and he's an unlockable character after you beat him as a boss in the game. These are his racing stats if you care. And one thing I do want to mention of what time period Klungo this is, the game is very inconsistent on where it takes place. Because the game says it takes place after Tui, but Grunty isn't a skeleton when she was in Tui, as well as Klungo is still being portrayed as Grunty's minion, even though he's supposed to quit. So, uh, regardless, next game, again. But this is the game we've all been waiting for, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. This is one of my favorite games for Klungo lore, and you'll see what I mean. So Klungo earlier said he was gonna get a stupid desk job and make stupid video games. Well, he fucking does. He's a certified video game developer in Nuts and Bolts. He owns his own arcade, and it's fucking dope. It also went through many designs before being finalized in the game, so here's a couple of those scrap designs. They're pretty interesting. But Klungo, man, he's a, he's a video game developer and a proud arcade owner. So what kind of game did Klungo make? Hero Klungo Saves the World. This is his magnum opus. Klungo himself even says it's the best game ever, so we know it's true. In this game, you play as Klungo and you jump over these bad things, I don't really know what they are. And you have to make it to the finish line while Klungo auto runs. Gruntilda is the final boss of this little mini game. There's not much to say about it, but apparently it's like insanely hard and unfair. And apparently the game has a gimmick where it crashes and you have to restart a level. I haven't seen footage of it crashing though, so take that with a grain of salt. I've just heard. You may have noticed this cool ass arcade border the game has, depicting Klungo as some badass superhero fighting the evil Grunty. Nothing of note to say about it besides mentioning it and pointing it out. It's pretty cool art. There's also a DLC you could buy for Nuts and Bolts called Logs Lost Challenges, and a sequel to Klungo's arcade game is included, this time named Hero Klungo Saves the Universe. It plays pretty similar, except now Klungo has like a laser gun this time. The last little thing to mention about Nuts and Bolts Klungo is that he appears in different levels, wearing like different outfits. They're kinda cool, here they are on the screen. And this bit isn't Nuts and Bolts related, but to end off us talking about the games themselves, Here's the original concept art of Klungo before he was even in Banjo-Kazooie. Pretty awesome. Now, we're in the final, final chapter of Klungo's history. This includes very recent advancements in Klungo lore. Maybe even the bottom of the iceberg, perhaps. You may or may not know of the popular series on YouTube, Boundary Break. It's a series where Chassez takes a modded camera out of bounds to explore developer secrets in games. I recommend the series, it's a fun watch, but in this video he showed off some things in Banjo-Tooie that you wouldn't normally be able to see without manipulating the camera. He was able to discover that in the opening cutscene of Tooie, there is a completely pitch black void Klungo that T-poses and glides across Spiral Mountain. I honestly don't know what else to add beyond that, but uh, it's, it's Klungo, that's Klungo I think. Okay, I promise. Last. And probably one of my favorite pieces of Klungo knowledge is this fucking song that I found while researching Klungo. This is a fucking Klungo love song named He's My Baby and His Name's Klungo. This song actually comes from a Fiverr request that was made by the Cold Ones podcast that's hosted by Anything For Views and Max Mofo. They commissioned Ando Pira to make this banger of a song. It's a love song, so she like sings about how much she loves Klungo, gives a couple of Klungo facts off the Banjo-Tooie wiki, you know. It's a fun watch, and both that song and the podcast itself is in the description. So, uh, yeah, um, Klungo. Rare has made some insane shit as you've seen. I've covered a good amount of rare in these past few videos. It's been really fucking fun and entertaining. Klungo is someone who you definitely knew if you played the Banjo games. But maybe you learned something new about him today, or even grew a deeper bond with Klungo like I have. 
I always loved Klungo, but after finding out more about him, everything about him even, he really is something special. He's my baby, and his name's Klungo, and I hope after watching this, he's yours too.